Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will be using a machine learning algorithm called Random Forest for credit risk assessment. If you don't know what is a random forest, in the previous video we discussed decision tree algorithm and random forest is just multiple trees voting for an output in order to improve the overall accuracy. In this project, we will be analyzing the data of 1000 bank customers that have received loans and it turned out that some of them were good customers and they paid back their loans and some of them they did not. The goal of this project is to build a machine learning model to help the bank to classify new loan requests as either potential good customers or bad customers. In other words, how likely a customer is to pay back his loan and how likely he is not. This project can also be applied in other industries like insurance, real estates, and so on. So, so let's get started. So this is our data set for 1000 customers that the bank has already granted them loans. We have a lot of information about each customer, uh, like the current balance in his account, the duration of the loan, previous credit, the purpose of the loan, the amount of the loan. We have a lot of other information here, um, like the age, other credits, apartment type, occupation, and number of dependents, uh, if the customer is foreign worker, and so on. And here we have the output column to tell us, was the customer a good customer, and he paid back his loan or his credit, or was the, was the customer a bad customer and he did not pay back his loan? So we will use this information to train our, our model using the random forest algorithm to come up with a model that helps the bank to classify new customers with new loan requests into either good customers that probably they will pay back their loans or a bad customers that probably they will not pay back uh, the loan. So let's go ahead and do this in Python. So first we need to import some libraries that we need. So we need pandas to work with data frames. From SQL and Ensemble, we need to import random forest classifier. So this is our machine learning algorithm that we will use to do the classification. And from SQL model selection, we need to import train test split. This is to split our data into a training data set and testing data set. And also from SQL metrics, we need to import accuracy score to evaluate the performance of the model. Now let's load our data into a pandas data frame. We have already explained this data set in Excel. So we have 1000 customers. And we have 22 different columns. One column is the customer ID. One column is the credit, which is the output column. So the rest 20 columns are the input features that we will use to train our model. If we take a look at the data type in each column, we can see that all of them are having object data type, except the customer ID. So we need to convert all these columns, data types, into a numeric data, because machine learning algorithms can work with only numeric data. So let's go ahead and do that here. So before we do that, first, we need to set the customer ID column as the index column, because we don't need to include this into our training. We don't need to use it as an input feature. And then the rest of the columns, we copied and pasted them here. And then we created this for loop. We we'll loop through all of the columns and then replace them with a new column with the same name, but with a numeric data type using the .cat.codes. So if you run this, and we take a look at the new data frame, we can see that the customer ID is now the index column and we have 21 different columns. One column is the output and 20 columns are the input features. All of them have been created into a numeric data. Next, uh, we need to put all the input features into a data frame named X. So this is going to be our input, which is the 20 columns except the output column and the output column will put it into another data frame named Y. So X is going to be our input, 20 different features, and Y is the output column, which is the credit column, which is basically one or zero. If the customer is good, is one. If the customer is bad, is zero. So we run this, and now it's time to split our data into a training data set and testing data set. So 30% will be used as a testing data set and 70% as a training data set. So out of the 1,000 customers, 700 customers will be used to train our model, and 300 customers will be used to test the performance of the model. The random state here, you can use any number. This is just to make sure that every time we run the code, we get the same split. So that means the, 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 the 300 for testing will be taken from the first 300 or the last 300 or the middle. So setting the random state to a fixed number will make sure that every time we run the code, we get the same split. Otherwise, you will get slightly different uh, results. So let's run this. And now we are ready to build our model. So our model is a random forest classifier. There is a lot of parameters that you can change if you want to, to improve the performance of the model. 
I will leave the documentation for this for this algorithm in the description of this video. Here we are we are uh, setting only two parameters. The n estimators is the number of trees because, as we said, random forest uh, is is uh, basically based on uh, decision trees. And random state again, this is also to make sure that the way the data is split through the trees is every time is the same. Otherwise, uh, every time you run the code, you will get slightly different uh, results. So here we, we initiate our model and then we pass the training data. So the input features for 700 customers together with the output or the label for these customers, if they are good customers or bad customers, so the model can learn the job. And after that, we, we pass the test data set without the label, without the output column, and we ask the model to predict or to classify them and put them in the Y predict uh, new column. And then we will add both of them to the X test uh, data frame to have a look on the predictions versus the, the actual. So we can see here, now we have at the X test, we said it was supposed to be 20 columns, and now we have 22 because we added the, the last two columns, the predictions versus the actuals. So we can see some of them are matching, some of them are not. So we don't know how the model is performing. So let's go ahead and calculate the accuracy. So accuracy score, we pass both the Y test, which is the actual, and then Y predict, which is the predictions by the model. And then we print the accuracy score. So it is 77%. We can also get the confusion matrix to further understand the performance of the model, uh, how many times the model predicted correctly the one class and how many times predicted correctly the zero class, which is the good customer and the bad customer. So from SQL matrix, we can import also the confusion matrix. And then the confusion matrix, again, we pass the actual and predictions. And then we print the confusion matrix. So 196 times was cor correctly predicted for the one class, for the good people class, and 35 times was correctly classified for the, for the zero class, the bad customer class. We can also plot this confusion matrix and make it even more fancier and more clearer. So we need to import two more libraries. We need Seaborn and Matplot. And we will use Seaborn to make a heat map. We will pass our confusion matrix that we have created here, this one, and we set the annotation to true, the data formatting to be integers, the, the color is to be blues, and then the labels negative positive for the X and negative positive for the Y. And then we create a math plot, uh, plot. The title is confusion matrix, the Y label and the X label, and we show this. We get this fancy confusion matrix is the same, but we can, it's, it's more understandable. So this is the predicted labels and this is the true labels. So when the truth was positive, the actual is positive, so the customer is a good customer. The model has correctly classified it or predicted it as positive, as a good customer, 196 times. And when the truth was positive, the, the model predicted it as negative only 17 times. So the model is doing very good on this class, predicting the good people, the good customers. When the truth was negative, so the customer is not a good customer, the model classified this correctly as negative here uh, 35 times and misclassified it 52 times as positive. So in fact, they are bad customers, but the model is saying they are good customers. So the good news for the bank is that they can make a lot of money here because they're granting loans to good people and they will make some money out of it. But quite some, some people will be classified as good customers while they are in fact not a good customers. You can still improve the performance of this model by playing with the parameters of the, of the random forest classifier of the model, or you can even use um, different uh, algorithms, or you can use big data, more data, more input features. So there is still room to improve this. But uh, yeah, last thing, if you want to understand which features in our input features uh, were the, the most important ones, so you can, you can go to model.feature importances, and then you pass the X train, the 20 features that we used in our training data set. And then you can sort the, the values. And you can see here that the current account, the current balance is, is the most important one. The duration of the loan, the purpose of the loan, the amount, the previous credit, these are the most important features. 
Well, the least important is if the customer is a, is a foreign worker or not. This is not giving a lot of information to the model. So that's the end of the video and thank you very much for watching.